All right, good afternoon everyone. This is Matt Moskaitis, the Director of Marketing with VSGI. I'm excited to announce we have Brian Phillips, a Senior Product Marketing Manager with Polycom here with us this afternoon. Uh, he's here to discuss the evolution of the Polycom product set from the HDX series, which has been a very, uh, a very great product for a lot of companies for a long time, and it's now evolved to the new Real Presence Group series, and he's here to uncover some of the details and, and great new features that are behind that. I um, also want to let everyone know this will be recorded, and I'll be sending it out to all participants, and I'll also make it available on our website, and I'll shoot that link out to everyone later this afternoon and feel free to pass that along to anyone else in your organization who might benefit from this. We'll have a brief uh, Q&A period at the end, so please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can write them in the chat window or I'll open up the lines towards the end and you can ask them uh, yourself. Without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Brian. Hey, Brian. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Real Presence Group Series, uh, HDX, and kind of some of this transition, right? Because HDX has been a really successful video conferencing product line, right? It's, you know, we've sold nearly half a million of them since we started shipping HDX in 2006, right? So it's been very, very widely deployed all around the globe, and now we're starting to make this transition over to Group Series, and kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit and some of the benefits of doing that. Um, but I guess to start off, maybe a little bit of history, right? Because as I mentioned, HDX launched, it was actually, I think it was 10 years ago this month. I think it was October of 2006 was when we actually first announced it. And if you've been familiar with Polycom for a while, you might know that, you know, we started with the HDX 9000, and then we had the 8000, the 7000. And so we've had, you know, various iterations along the way. But in the end, it's all based on the same core platform that was developed uh, and launched in 2006. So for... I guess a little bit of a comparison point of what else was going on in the technology industry in 2006. Um, the iPhone actually didn't exist yet. It uh, was announced, I think it was in January of 2007, started shipping a few months later, but back in 2006 we were either using flip phones or maybe Blackberries, but uh, no iPhones, no real true smartphones quite yet when HDX launched. Um, Netflix actually did no streaming. They were in the DVD by mail business, <laughs> if you remember that. I don't know even know, do they still do DVD by mail? I don't know, they might still have that in some back corner somewhere, but I don't think that's what we think of Netflix as uh, today. And then just another thing on the tech space, you know, MySpace was the king of all social media, by far actually. I, I, Dug up some stats from 2006. Facebook and Twitter kind of barely existed. They just launched and were pretty insignificant uh, when HDX launched. So just kind of some fun examples to show how far technology overall has come in the last decade and certainly in video collaboration, right? There's just a lot we can do with some of the newer generation platforms and HDX just, it just couldn't, right? And expectations have changed and the types of rooms that you're looking to deploy video into have changed and evolved. The way that people use video has changed. And so, and frankly, even things like the advent of the iPhone, for example, I think have changed expectations around usability and some of the functionality of, of video device, devices, even in more corporate environments like this. So with that, we've got Real Presence Group Series. It was launched, actually, it was October of 2012. So it's been on the market for a few years but a much more updated platform. We have adopted a next generation chipset as part of its core. It just is capable of doing a lot that HDX just isn't. Um, it's been on the market for a few years now, continuing to grow. We actually just had a really significant new uh, software update for it about a month ago. So there's still a lot of headroom left in group series. And I think it's now is really the sweet spot for when a lot of customers are looking to upgrade because group series has been on the market long enough that it's mature and stable and robust and well-tested, yet it can do so much more than HDX. So I think for, for a lot of folks, we're seeing this as kind of the inflection point of when they're looking to invest and upgrade existing HDXs into group series. So with that, I wanted to kind of go through the top 10 reasons that you might want to upgrade. And coming up with any sort of rank order for this is tough, right? Because everybody's different. All of your environments are different. Um, we're all unique snowflakes, right, when it comes to how we use video. But there are some applications and benefits in group series that have kind of naturally risen to the top as I've talked to customers and they've talked about their 
specific environments and what they're looking to get out of video collaboration, there's definitely some specific key points that um, do rise to the top when it comes to why customers are upgrading. Um, the number one that I'm going to talk about is native integration with Skype for Business. So, right, this is one of those where um, if you don't use Skype for Business, then, well, maybe not as relevant for you. But if you are, or you're looking at it, or you're thinking about it, even if you're just using Skype for Business, maybe for presence in IM today, you haven't quite expanded into video and voice quite yet. Um, I think this native integration that we have with group series with Skype for Business is a huge game changer in terms of the way that people are collaborating. Um, so this is something that's unique to group series. HDX can't do it, and our competitors can't quite do it. And the thing that makes it unique, the reason we call it native integration, is because group series is the, it's the only standards-based video conferencing system that can actually act as a Skype for Business endpoint. It literally is running Skype for Business on the box. It registers like any other user or room or endpoint on Skype for Business, directly calls into the Skype for Business AVMCU. I mean, there's, there's just all of this rich, robust um, native integration that we can have through the fact that we basically are running Skype for Business on group series. HDX doesn't do this. None of our competitors do this, right? Everybody claims interoperability. Everybody claims interoperability with Skype for Business. But nobody else has native integration. That is unique to Polycom. It's a unique benefit of our relationship with Microsoft and all the development work that we've done to ensure that Group Series has the best Skype for Business experience in the industry. So what does that actually mean, right? It means that when you walk in the room, you can have an integrated calendar from Exchange right there on your Group Series. Click to join right into a Skype meeting. You can have um, gallery view participants actually spread across multiple displays. We support all the gallery view experiences on group series. It means you can send and control native content or, or receive and control native content through group series. We even now have the Skype UI on our Real Presence Touch. So this is actually something that just came last month. We're now, um, as an alternative to our regular Polycom UI, you can actually switch it over to a Skype UI right on Real Presence Touch. We co-developed this with Microsoft. Our user experience team and their team worked hand in hand to develop this interface that's totally consistent with the desktop experience that users are going to get with Skype for Business and also consistent with um, other Skype room devices that are going to be coming to market. So from a user training standpoint, just from an adoption standpoint, making sure people know how to use this stuff, it really helps to smooth the path when the look and feel and navigation and language and everything that's used in the user interface is um, consistent with what people are familiar with from the desktop. Um, and we also have got, coming up very shortly here, native integration with Office 365. So um, if you're using the cloud version of Skype for Business through Office 365, we expect that later this quarter, where you get all the same functionality in the cloud version too. So this, um, that's why this one rises to the top and I put it number one, because it's been a huge factor for a lot of customers. Anybody who's using Skype for Business, you got to make sure that all of your collaboration technology integrates with that natively to not have these disparate experiences, right, where you have to train users in something new every time you roll something out. Group series is the only thing that's going to get you this. So that's why I put it as kind of the number one. Frankly, I could spend this entire hour talking about our Skype for Business integration. I will stop there. But um, definitely, if you are a Skype for Business environment or you're looking at going in that direction, I would reach out to your VSGI account manager. And we've got a whole team of Microsoft experts on staff at Polycom that we can get engaged with you to understand your environment and help walk you through um, all the ways that this is really a tremendous benefit um, within any Skype customers. Okay, so that's number one. Um, a second reason a lot of people are upgrading is around content. This was um, one of the most significant kind of performance upgrades uh, for group series over HDX. HDX could do pretty good quality content, right? You could share PowerPoint slides or you know Word docs and things like that. Static content, you could share it in HD and, and it looked good. But we've seen, especially over the last few years, more and more customers are having higher expectations with what kinds of content they're looking to share, right? Um, anywhere from, we have a lot of customers who are in the media and entertainment industry, for example, right? So a lot of TV and film production companies, things like that. Um, so one example, it's a company called King Size Productions. They're actually the production team that makes the TV show The Good Wife. 
So they shoot that show. They actually film it in Brooklyn, New York. But all the like editors, a lot of the producers are in LA. And so they use group series to actually do real-time editing and collaboration of the show. As they would shoot stuff in Brooklyn, they could then look at it in LA and kind of understand uh, where things were going from a plot standpoint, what needed to be reshot, and things like that. Something they could really only do with group series, right? HDX just did not have the capability to share real-time, full motion, you know, better than Blu-ray content whereas Group Series does. Um, a lot of the other customers that we've seen get excited about this, education, right? High demands for the richness and quality of content sharing in an education environment. Uh, healthcare, right? Obviously, if, if you've got a, you know, a telemedicine application, you've got a remote doctor a thousand miles away doing your diagnosis, I think you want the best quality content that he can see, right, to make an accurate call on, on what's going on with you health-wise. Um, architecture firms doing uh, CAD animations, creative agencies, designing ad campaigns, right? There's a multitude of applications. Frankly, even just your standard, you know, static content, right? Ex things like Excel spreadsheets, when you can share them in full 1080p, just rich, crisp detail, and share and edit things in real time, um, it makes a world of difference in the way people collaborate. So that's been a huge reason a lot of customers have been moving up to group series. It's the quality of the, the content and the content collaboration that they get out of it. Okay. Um, now, a third reason is easy and flexible controls, right? We've worked really hard in group series to make it as easy and intuitive as possible, and we continue to make improvements in every software release, um, refining things. We do, we're always doing usability testing and putting this stuff in front of actual users um, and having them walk through different steps and seeing what's difficult and seeing what would be more intuitive. So we're constantly refining this. It started off just a nice, easy, simplified remote control that comes with the system, or you can add on real presence touch, creates a really nice, easy to use touch interface in the room. And I mentioned earlier, this, this single touch to dial, I've seen for a lot of customers is a huge thing. And that's not limited to Skype, right? That can be in a traditional video environment too. So we have that um, deployed within Polycom, for example. When you walk into a conference room here in Polycom with a group series, you see the conference room's calendar right on the display. All you do is walk in on the Real Presence Touch there, the calendar's right there, just single touch to dial into your meeting, you're good to go. Same thing with any group series that are used on a desktop as personal systems. So I happen to use a group series at my desk. Uh, and I don't dial, I never dial numbers anymore. Literally, I just go to my calendar and I hit join now for every single meeting that I'm in, right? It's a huge game changer from a usability standpoint. There's no more 10 minutes at the start of the meeting of fumbling around with remote control. Literally, you just walk in the room and hit join now and it just works. So um, that's been huge. And again, something that's, that's unique when you upgrade from HDX to Real Premise Group Series, okay? So some other things around the experience. Um, so one of the things that I think makes Polycom video different from anybody else is we put so much attention and emphasis on trying to improve the experience, um, right? Everybody is delivering HD quality video, right? All of our competitors deliver good looking HD quality video. It's table stakes at this point, right? But we're looking at the actual dynamics of what is going on during a meeting. And as much as possible, we're trying to have the system automatically account for that and adjust based on those conditions without the user having to do anything. So one example of that is noise block. So that is a technology we've got in group series. What it does is it's listening for times when nobody in the room is speaking, but there's distracting sounds happening. So it could be you're, you know, tapping away on a keyboard or maybe it's a lunch meeting, you got a bag of chips there, or it could be sirens or leaf blowers outside the windows, right? Um, and what it does is when it, it senses that nobody is speaking, but there's other noises happening, it will automatically mute your room. So it's kind of like a smart mute, right? Now, as soon as you start talking, it immediately opens it up and lets your voice through. Even if there's noise, it lets everything through because we want to make sure that nobody's voice is ever cut off, right? You always need to be heard whenever you're speaking. But most of the time when those distracting sounds are happening, it's when there's nobody talking. So uh, that's where noise block takes care of that. You no longer have to do the, hey, can everybody go on mute? Um, right? Even this call here, right? I think everybody's just proactively muted because we've all been on those calls. There's always somebody who just didn't think about it, hasn't gone on mute, and it just is a distraction to your um, conversation, right? So that's what noise block helps take care of that. So something that's related but different is called acoustic fence. This is also something that's unique to group series. Um, so what acoustic fence is doing 
is it's creating a physical area and you're capturing the voices inside that area, but not the voices from outside. So you think of, you know, more and more organizations are deploying more open office environments, right? So not every meeting space is surrounded by four walls anymore. Uh, some companies have got a collaboration area off in a corner, uh, maybe for a specific working team to um, collaborate on, and they're doing video from that area, but you know, it's surrounded by lots of other stuff. It's, it's in more of an open environment. The type of place would be really difficult to have a video call on, right? So that's where Acoustic Fence comes in. What you do is you, you use the ceiling microphones to create a physical barrier, so to speak, so that you're hearing voices from inside but not those from outside. So it does a couple things. One, if, you, if nobody's talking inside the fence but people are talking outside the fence, it, again, it automatically mutes. Different from noise block because this applies to voices as well. So it's not based on the type of sound like noise block is. It's based on the location of it. But then, I think even more remarkable when you hear the demos, with acoustic fence, if you are speaking inside the fence and there's others having a conversation there outside the fence, it attenuates their volume by basically 12 decibels. And the net effect of that is you can still hear their voices a little bit, but the person inside the fence is heard much, much more prominently. So it's actually a usable conversation. Without acoustic fence, it's just this cacophony of voices, right? And it's very hard when you're on the far end to discern who's talking and to pay attention to them when you hear all these other conversations. With acoustic fence turned on, it's just kind of white noise in the background and you can actually focus on the person speaking. So again, these um, technologies that are designed to automatically adjust to the dynamics of the environment rather than the user having to do something. You don't have to keep your finger hovered over the mute button anymore. It just takes care of it for you. Right? Okay. So something that's similar on more the video side rather than the audio side is with our Eagle Eye Director and Eagle Eye Producer. So Eagle Eye Director was really the first camera tracking system to market where there have been other ones in the past where you had to wear little doohickeys and things like that, but this is the first one that really operated independently, zooming in specifically on the person talking, using audio triangulation as well as other visual clues embedded within the camera to identify who's speaking and focus in on them. Um, there are others in the industry that have come up with their own knockoff versions that are more expensive and more limited. Eagle Eye Director is still the only one that works across our whole spectrum of video solutions from entry level group series all the way up. Um, now we also have Eagle Eye Producer. It's a little bit different in that it actually has a couple different modes. Eagle Eye Producer can frame in specifically on the person speaking or you can choose to frame everybody in the room. And again, it's all just changes automatically as people come and go, somebody stands up to present, the camera view automatically changes. So we really are the innovators when it comes to this kind of automated camera solutions that again look at the environment, what's happening in the room and automatically adjust without anybody needing to do anything. Just making the experience better for everybody without putting um, a burden on anyone of having to do any manual controls themselves. So Eagle Eye Producer in particular, um, I think it's a no-brainer add-on for just about any room where you're deploying video conferencing. And then Eagle Eye Director comes in when you really need the highest end experience with the best reach. Um, so again, talk to your VSGI account managers if you want more details about those. But um, those are some of the things that, again, are unique benefits of upgrading to group series that uh, HDX just isn't, isn't quite capable of handling. So something that's related to Eagle Eye Producer, it's actually another feature of it. Um, is around actually tracking and counting the number of participants in the room. So the way that Eagle Eye Producer works is that it's actually looking for faces and identifying where all the faces are so that it can frame the camera view appropriately. So while it's doing that, it's also counting the number of faces that it sees and it's tracking all that information within Real Presence Clarity. That's our kind of management infrastructure solution, it's Clarity. Uh, or Real Presence Resource Manager. You may be familiar with that as well as a component of it. So that's where this information is tracked within the call detail records there. Um, so the cool thing about this is it means for the first time you actually have an accurate count of how many people are participating in video calls from your conference rooms, right? Before all you knew, if you had a particular call and maybe you've got a couple individuals dialed in, okay, you know there's only one person there, and you got a couple of conference rooms, all you know is they're conference rooms, right? You don't actually know how many people were in there, but now you do. You actually have counts of how many people participated on a video call from those rooms. So when you're calculating the return on investment for video, when you're cap, um, trying to track utilization of video, 
or even just understand whether your rooms are um, optimized and deployed appropriately, right? You might find that there's one particular room that seats a dozen people, and on average only three people are in there on a video call. Well, maybe there's some things you want to do to adjust around the types of technology that's deployed and where, based on the actual usage patterns for how people are utilizing video from those spaces. So, again, that's something that's unique to Eagle Eye Producer uh, that you get when using group series. Okay. All right. Um, so another unique benefit of group series is it's just a lot physically smaller than HDX. So I don't know how many of you have actually seen one. Um, the, the photo here in the upper left is it's what we call a group 310. So uh, it's got a little camera with it called the Eagle Eye Acoustic, very small, just mounts right to the top of your flat panel screen. Um, but all of these components are a lot smaller in dimensions than HDX. And so that's been pretty important for being able to take video to other locations where maybe you just couldn't before, right? Um, so a couple examples here, actually the photo on the lower left there is a product we call Video Protect. So it's actually, it was first developed for what's politely referred to as the criminal justice market. That means prisons. It's a prison video conferencing system. But there's a huge market for that, right? For being able to have remote visits with lawyers and family and things like that. Um, so it's a hardened, protected, um, um, prisoner safe <laughs> box that holds your group series system. We couldn't have done this with HDX. It would just be physically too big. But with group series, it was perfect to be able to put it in that smaller form factor. And actually, we've seen a lot of people buying that video protect for non-prison use, where actually retail kiosks and other customer service type applications, but you still have it more of a public space. So you need it to be hardened and robust and reliable, right? Another example over the photo on the right here is what we call our utility cart. So it is a full kind of cart system, self-contained. Um, it's got a battery, optional battery in it. You've got your group 310, your camera right on there, the display, and you can wheel it around wherever you need video. So manufacturing floors, uh, maybe certain healthcare environments, things like that, it's easy to take video anywhere. So they're just, just, a, just a couple examples. But frankly, I mean, we've seen all sorts of other unique applications. I know we've got um, one customer who, um, it was a government customer who used it for crisis response, right? So they actually built it into a little customized suitcase, well, not even a suitcase, like a briefcase with um, kind of a built-in monitor in the top, and then the codec just goes right in the bottom, the camera. So it's this nice little package they can take literally anywhere video is needed after they've had a, a natural disaster. So again, something that would have been really hard. It's, it's tough to, even in HDX 6000, it's tough to lug one of those bad boys around. Group 310, Group 500 with that little Eagle Eye acoustic makes a world of difference for deploying video in new and unique spaces that you just may not have thought of before. Okay. Um, so a related topic on that is around huddle rooms. Uh, huddle rooms have been kind of the hot topic in video over the last year or so because more huddle rooms are being deployed than any other type of conference room, right? And I know a lot of, probably a lot of you, a lot of our customers have been trying to figure out what to do with those spaces because historically they didn't have much video at all. There's very limited budget for those rooms. And frankly, there's a lot more of them than there are big boardrooms. So you gotta figure out, well, how do I scale a video investment to be able to go in a larger number of rooms? Um, so that's, again, where group series comes into play. The smaller size makes it really right size for those smaller huddle spaces. Because by definition, it's a small room. There's not a lot of extra space. You don't have a rack in there to mount a bunch of stuff, right? You need to be able to deploy video in a way that it can be easily hidden away. It's not taking up room on the table. Um, you're just leaving space for people to meet and collaborate, right, and not have technology sitting in the way. So group series have been pretty big for that, uh, for that reason, but also because, frankly, the price points are just a lot lower than they were for HDX. When you look at the, the entry-level pricing on a group series, it's almost half of where we were on HDX. And so that makes it much more mass deployable for huddle spaces um, where it just wasn't possible previously with HDX. Um, slightly different direction. So another reason customers have been looking at this is um, a lot of our customers are trying to lower their infrastructure costs. And one of the ways they're doing that is by moving to SVC technology. So without diving into a lot of detail on what SVC is, it's essentially a different way of transmitting video versus AVC or more traditional uh, video conferencing um, that in essence simplifies your infrastructure, but it also puts more of a burden on the endpoint. So the endpoints are doing a lot more of the control and the decision making, so to speak. Um, the infrastructure can be a lot simpler. So it allows the infrastructure cost to go down a lot. 
However, because more of the complexity is moved to the endpoint, it requires a more powerful endpoint, which means HGX just wasn't capable of handling it. So a lot of our customers who are looking at SVC have looked at group series as well um, if they're looking to make that transition and lower their overall costs. All right. Tenth and final point is just around, um, I've mentioned before, group series is just a more modern platform, right? It's still got a lot of headroom for growth and new features. Um, HDX topped out a while ago, just in terms of its processing capability and what it could handle. Um, so just from an overall investment protection standpoint, so HDX has gone end of sale. Actually, it's the end of this month is, is going to be kind of our last order for HDX. And it's going to be end of software support in a couple of years here, which means no more bug fixes or security patches or interoperability fixes or anything like that. Then a couple years after that, even the hardware is, is end of support as well. So. I think from a long-term investment protection standpoint, now is a good time to be looking at group series and looking at transitioning those rooms from HDX to group series so that you've got a really, really long runway for new features, new capabilities, and support um, long into the future. Okay. So the good news is we have we put a lot of work into trying to make this as cost-effective as we can, right? Because we realize that just taking out an existing system that's working fine and replacing it with something else um, it's sometimes it's tough to squeeze within your existing budgets. So one of the things we've done is we've actually made a modification to our trade-in program to allow you to trade in HDX. This is actually something you couldn't do before. We just added this a couple of months ago. But you can now trade in your existing HDX systems, and you can receive an additional 20% discount on new group series models. And like I said, especially when looking at the entry-level prices for group series, significantly less already than HDX, you layer that you know, added discount on top, and then it gets even more. So definitely reach out to your you know, VSGI account managers for more details on pricing and kind of how this all lines up in the end, but just something to hopefully help um, make some of those investment decisions and get moved up from HDX to group series. Okay. So with that, that was all I had. So kind of kept this one short and sweet. Again, there's probably 50 other reasons I could put on here for various um, reasons people have moved up from group series, um, or from HDX to group series, again, it's, it's all really dependent on your specific environment, and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of feature advantages in group series over HDX. Um, so definitely get with your, your VSGI reps and um, connect them in with you know, some of our Polycom folks, and take a look at your environment and make sure that you're aware of all the great benefits that you get from moving up uh, to group series. Okay. So with that, we can go ahead and open it up for questions. Great. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I'd also like to mention that if you're in the D.C. or New York area, Polycom has really nice executive briefing centers where you can come get a live demo, especially the one in New York. We were up there a couple weeks ago, and the views are amazing. So that alone is worth the trip. But if you want to see it in person, um, definitely check that out. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'm going to unmute everyone now, and feel free to ask Brian. Yeah, hello. Uh can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, I'm Khaled Haji from uh, UNDP. Actually, we have some group series deployed in our uh, building, but also we are integrating the group series with uh, the Skype for Business on-prem. Why it is integrated with uh, the link on-prem? Because simply we were told before that we cannot integrate the group series with the Office 365 because now our link is the office in the, in the cloud, 365. And if I am hearing you very well at the beginning of the presentation, which I thank you very much, is very useful, that you said that now we can integrate group series even if our link is in the cloud uh, through Office 365. This is the first part of my question. The second part is about the integration with the exchange. Also, our exchange is part of the Office 365 solution. And also, we would like when we were trying to uh, integrate our group series with uh, the Exchange server so that the group series will receive the calendar invite and then we can click on the calendar on the group series and join the session immediately. Also, we were told and we were working with Microsoft and Polycom guys and we were informed that this is not also possible for with uh, uh, the Exchange online. So can you confirm here that now we can first integrate the group series with the Skype for Business in the cloud, and also we can integrate the group series with the Exchange server in the cloud. 
Good questions. Okay, so I will actually tackle the second one first around Exchange in the cloud or Microsoft Exchange as part of Office 365. So that is available today. That was actually a software release we did it was just about a year ago where we added the ability for group series to pull down calendar information from either um, it, we've already had the exchange on premises for a while, but it was about a year ago we added exchange online. So you can integrate it, then ex exchange online and have the single click to dial experience. So that was released, uh, that was our 5.0 software release that was in September of last year. So if the, it could be that the information that you got was either before then or if it was more recently, they may not, have just have not been updated on the latest. But that is available and working today with exchange as part of Office. 365. Okay, now, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, just for, for this part, meaning I need to upgrade the software from the Polycom uh, website or you have a special API or something that I have to download from you or buy it from you as VSGI? You would just want to upgrade the software on your group series. So if it's at version 5.0 or later, then it will integrate with Exchange Online. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yep. Then sure. the second part. So on the Skype for Business part, so yes, we've had this native integration with Skype for Business for quite a while, but it's been with the on-premises version. And we've been working for a while to enable that in Skype for Business online that's part of Office 365. There's, there's always a lot of challenges and complexities to it because the online version just has some fundamentally different ways we need to integrate versus the on-premises version. So here's where that currently sits. In our group 6.0 software that we released just last month at the end of September, that's the software release where um, we included the software for integrating with Office 365. However, there's another part that needs to happen before it will work, and that's Microsoft needs to take and they go through a whole set of qualification testing of group series with Office 365 before they basically flip a switch in Office 365 to enable group series to integrate with it. So that's the second thing that's happening right now. The software has been released, but it won't register to Office 365 um, Skype for Business yet until Microsoft's finished their qualification process. And of course, that's all in Microsoft's hands. We're currently expecting that that will happen later this quarter. So uh, sometime between now and the end of the year, we expect that uh, Microsoft will qualify, they'll approve the software, and then they will flip the switch in Office 365 so that Group Series can register. But I just, we can't make any guarantees because it's really all in Microsoft's hands. So we will have an additional um, announcement once that's happened and Group Series can register with Office 365. Like I said, we expect it within the next couple of months here. Um, so I would just keep an eye out um, throughout these next couple of months because we will put out a release once uh, Microsoft has approved it and it can register. Thank you so much. Very fruitful sure. answer. I had one uh, question come in over the chat that uh, I'll actually take. He was asking if there is a deadline for the trade-in discount. And uh, we are actually extending this discount through the end of the year. So you have you know, still a good two and a half months or so before that will go away. I also saw that another question came through in the chat. Um, do any of the units do um, audio conferencing along with Skype and video? So, um, so the group series with its native integration with Skype for Business, yes, that could just be for an audio call as well. In fact, in the latest software, in this new group 6.0 software that we just released, um, we've actually made that even easier, where it was possible before, but it wasn't always obvious or intuitive to users how to do it. Now we actually have a little toggle switch within the user interface. So you, the user can actually select it's a video call or it's an audio call, and then they could just dial the phone number and it will just dial it like an audio conference instead of video. So that um, absolutely is part of it as well. Does anyone else have a question for Brian before we uh, say goodbye? All right, excellent. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time. I think this was a great presentation. As I mentioned at the outset, I will send this out to everyone who registered and feel free to forward it along to anyone else in your organization who you think would benefit from it. 
Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Have a great day. No problem. Thank you for joining everybody. Bye.